For all of human history, we've been looking at the skin, the surface of the waters of the world. Beneath this surface is another entirely alternate universe. It is intensely beautiful. It is intensely interesting. The light that penetrates through the surface has a quality unlike any other kind of light on Earth. The waters of the world are hypnotic. The underside of a stream, the underside of a river, a lake, or all of the oceans can be reflective like a pool of mercury, can be clear like a strange funhouse mirror, distorting and beautiful as you look upward through it or downward into it. But once you're underwater, you're weightless. And the pictures that I try to make here are pictures that are always about water. And the creatures that course across this blue curtain are beautiful, and they move with a dynamic intensity that makes any kind of movement on the gravitational part of our planet seem uncoordinated at best. I became interested in being underwater because underwater is the great escape. I put on the mask, and as Jacques Cousteau wrote in The Silent World, you put your head beneath the surface and civilization vanishes with one last bow. It's a lovely line, but it's very, it was very realistic to me. I read that book when I was 11, and it was a tremendous influence in my life. As a child, I went underwater, and I looked at the underside of the surface, even a swimming pool, and it becomes, at certain angles, a silvered surface, like a mirror, like a pool of quicksilver. And when you go through that, the light changes. The light comes down like a curtain in some places. If you look back up, it becomes a piercing, overly bright light with a single, amazingly complex dancing hot spot, which is the sun penetrating the sea. And it moves, it really does dance. Light does dance underwater. And I love that. In black and white, I depended upon natural light, so I learned how to control and look at natural light. In color, it's a different case entirely. It's all about the light you bring down and combine that with the light that exists in the sea. What is the greatest fear photographers have? The greatest fear is not having your leg gnawed off by a lion or facing down sharks or facing down people or in situations that you put yourself in. Every single photographer says, now, if I didn't screw up, it might be a great picture. This was the legacy of slide film, and it was also the art of slide film. Out of the hundreds of roles you'd shoot in an assignment, there'd be 12 or 14, and out of the 14, there'd be two or three that are so memorable. Those pictures, those slides, were perfect. It was like making a diamond, and that was the great joy of this. It had a terrific muscular intellectual challenge. Now, underwater, it gets worse because you can't change film there. My partner Jennifer Hayes and I go down to the sea with groups of cameras. For instance, we would take two or three cameras with 60 millimeter macro lenses and one or two with 105 millimeter macro lenses to get closer to smaller fish that are skittish. And then it'd be wide angle lenses. Underwater, you need super wide angle lenses. Strangely enough, the 16 millimeter fisheye turns out to be one of the great workhorses underwater. It's an aptly named lens, and it works because you have to get close to your subject and see as much of your subject as possible. We need an ocean ethic. It is part of our planet, and we have to know and see these things. We can't turn our back on it. We came from the sea, we should know as much about it as possible. There's corners of the ocean that are very weird and wonderful. The jellyfish lakes in Palau, the caves in Palau, 
the way the stingrays course across the sand in Grand Cayman Island, the way a leafy sea dragon moves through canopies of kelp and seagrasses is really an extraordinary creature. Unfortunately, what's happened is that we've discovered most of our planet. And during the time we've discovered it, very much like the conquistador swept through South America, we've destroyed it. The biggest threat to the ocean is obviously overfishing. And on top of that, tremendous amounts of pollution, of human garbage, of plastic. And we're just discovering the secret places where the turtles come to mate and nest. We're discovering uh, how deep a whale dives what happens to pilot whales? What happens to killer whales? What happens to the great schools of tuna which course across the Pacific? How the structures and the interrelationships of creatures on a coral reef work? All of these things are wonderful, wondrous new things. My interest is to be a photographer. These are things that I care about passionately but my job and my direction in life is to make pictures. And the byproduct of those pictures, the way the sea looks, the way things are, are what I want to tell people in the world. But first, I want to look at the light.